You're watching the Blitz 8 High School Football Preview Show with Travis Lee on Channel 8 WMTW. Our plays of the year from 2019, Addison Brown of Oxford Hill somehow makes the catch between his knees. Receivers ruling in 2019, Leighton Bickford a one-handed grab for Sanford. How about a trick play? Old Orchard runs the hook and ladder in the state game to Jacob Paye for the score. And Morse's Darius Hargett. Wow, that's all I can say. Wow, Darius Hargett. And two years later, I am still saying wow over that play. Unreal. Now, 74 teams are slated to play high school football in Maine this fall, and over a third will be in the eight-man divisions. A sign of things to come or something that will be the majority in the future. 15 high school football programs in Maine are making the conversion to eight-man this fall. It's going to be very interesting to see how it, like, how much of, how much it's like 11-man, I guess. A decade ago, Chevers went back-to-back -back in Class A. They have good numbers this year with 46 players in training camp, but that doesn't tell the story of why they're playing eight-man. If we played 11, we would be starting 14-year-old, uh, and then any backups after that would be, would be 14. So that's why eight is a, a really good option for us. It allows us to play the game and, and let the young guys develop. Besides moving to eight-man for safety reasons, some programs hope to rebuild, like Lake Region, which is joining eight-man. Through the preseason, the teams in their inaugural season are slowly finding the differences and similarities to 11 man. It doesn't affect my position that much. I'm still doing the same thing that I was doing in 11. It does feel like I have bigger holes to hit and there's a little more space to run, but the hits are bigger and a lot harder, so. We have seen some shootouts in this division. In the first ever eight man state final, we had one. Large school Mount Ararat beat small school Old Orchard. And with the addition of 16 teams, there will now be state finals for both large and small school divisions in eight men. Now, Mount Ararat will need some help this year as they got a lot of young guys. But they do have three key players from that team returning, including Elliot Douglas, one of their stalwarts on the offensive line. Old Orchard had 17 seniors leave the program last year, but they have one of the best coming back in the division in Jacob Paye, who was a QB on that state championship contending team. Michael, so many unknowns in this division. Yeah. Where do you start? Well, I mean, I think you have to start with Chevrolet because like you alluded to, it's a huge story that, that the biggest program, the most successful program in the state less than a decade ago is now an eight-man, and I understand the reasons for it. And they are going to be young, uh, but you have Mike Vance and John Wolfgram coaching the team. I think they're going to be very good despite their youth, and I think they're going to be there all the way to the end. Uh, Yarmouth's another team I've got my eye on. And I talk about another accomplished veteran coach in Jim Hartman and uh, Sam Bradford taking over quarterback for the Clippers this year. I look for them to score a lot of points. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a fun style to watch. I think we're going to see more and more of this going forward. So you better get used to eight man and, and I encourage people to get out and take it in. It, it's very enjoyable to watch. All right. Thank you, Michael. It will be an interesting year. Now in 2012, Mark Soren took over uh, an Oxford Hills program that was in shambles, total shambles. But since then, the Vikings have gone from respectable to being a contender each year to go to the state championship. This preseason, the former South Dakota quarterback let us listen in on one of the Vikings workouts. This is for the quarterbacks. And actually, I'd say that you guys should listen to this and understand, the, you understand the concept, football's a lot easier. It's very simple. We're gonna, we're gonna time this thing, a little competition. So I want the quarterback to be here, okay? One, two, three, and move around a little bit. You don't move around a lot, okay? You're gonna block, try to block for three seconds. Down one, down one, two, down one, three. Okay, try to get to the quarterback. Okay, try to get to the quarterback. Don't over-engage, don't over-commit. You got up into him, and you got a little bit of a head. You dropped your head just a little bit, and you want to get to the athletic kid, and now you're out of position a little bit. That was a one. That was a two. That was a three. Great. That's it. Wyatt, great job. He got outside. You stepped here. You met him out here. He crossed your face again. You stayed in front of him. That's a great job. That was a three. There you go. Lincoln, come on. You can, you can chase Eli, your BFF. Uh, the other issue is, listen. You guys can help the quarterback fix this. This quarterback right here likes to be too deep. When he gets too deep, the ball gets too high. Whoa. Look how easy that is. Don't make it complicated, guys. Do not make it complicated. All right, you know who doesn't make it complicated? Kevin Cooper, Bonnie Eagle, the Scots, won their seventh state championship in 2019, taking the eight title over Thornton Academy, ending TA's 22-game win streak. Scots have a lot of talent back, but so does Thornton Academy as they all starts with uh, Jack Emerson, their quarterback, who's 
pretty good. He's got some great targets in Nick Stinson and Anthony Jones, the last of the Rough Brothers, and then Isaiah Jones, who started as a freshman on that team in 2019. Just the second guy Kevin Kiesel's had started as a freshman. The other, of course, Andrew Libby, who's one of the best you're ever going to see in the state of Maine. Michael rejoins us to talk Class A football. Yeah, I mean, I guess you have to start with those two teams, right? I mean, you got Bonnie Eagle there, the defending champs, and they can never be overlooked. Kevin Cooper is one of the great coaches in the history of the state, and all he does is win championships. And then you have TA that just reloads year after year after year. Uh, you listed some of the names to watch there. They're, they're going to be a powerhouse again, and it's very possible they're going to be on a collision course for the state final. Uh, a couple other teams to keep an eye on. Scarborough has been right there with Bonnie Eagle and TA in recent years. They have a new coach this year, Packy Malia, uh, but they still have a Flaker on the roster. Jaden Flaker, he's going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns and leading that team a long way. And it's great to see Oxford Hills uh, maybe join those top three and make it a big four, if you will. Uh, see some new blood. They had that run to the regional final three years ago. They lost in overtime to Portland. Uh, so it's nice to see that program be consistently uh, a top competitor. And you know, Oxford the, Hills the, has 70 kids yep. out this year. Yeah, so, so <laughs> that's a good group. The more you know, the more you have uh, top teams, the better. And you know, hopefully Bangor will work its way back to the top, and we'll have several contenders as we go forward in Class A. Jake Minotti, a guy to watch, a quarterback for Sanford, and as I said, Oxford Hills. They have the coach's son at quarterback, Eli Soren. Wyatt Knightley played a little quarterback last year, going to convert to running back. They look like they've got a loaded team, especially on defense. All right, you know what? We all wait the whole show to find out who our players to watch are, right? You can criticize us later. These are our guesses. Jack Emerson, the great quarterback from Thornton. Will Ledbetter at Wyndham, another player to watch. A sophomore, he started for Wyndham. Cam Cornett of Marshwood. Good change of direction back can do it all. Started both ways as a sophomore in a state title team. David York of Kennebunk. This guy can run inside and out. Jacob Paye of Old Orchard. Of course, we just said, led his team to a state championship in eight man as a sophomore. Isaac Ufero of Oxford Hills, a two way threat as a tight end and a tough linebacker. Hayden Hendrickson, an X Factor for York, plays great defensive end, also receives and catches the ball, can run it too. Hunter Hayes, seems like he's been around for like 10 years because, you know what, he's always been playing at Levitt. He's back as the quarterback for Levitt. Brandon Boyle at Portland played for Deering two years ago. A versatile do everything back. And Nick Laughlin at Cape Elizabeth, a multi-purpose guy, can make plays on the ground in the air. He's just a junior. Some other notables, Thomas Horton, the lineman at Bonnie Eagle. Jaden Flaker, as we just spoke about. Jack Buta at Levitt, a Gaziano Award contender. Chris Reed at Moranacook, the QB, and Evett Borgay at Winslow. All right, hey, so those predictions we were talking about, they're going to be all over the place. Class A, I have Thornton over Oxford. Thornton over Bonnie Eagle for Michael. In Class B, it looks like this. Our guess, hey, South Portland, maybe they pick up the momentum. Wyndham <laughs> reaching the final. Kenny Bunk and Brunswick in the final in Michael's world. All right, Class C, hey, M Levitt over MCI, we both have that. Class D, I think that uh, we go different directions in the Class D predictions. Lisbon over Winthrop, Bucksport over Lisbon. And in the eight man, Identical picks, Michael. You stole my picks. Chevers and Miranda Cook, Chevers and Miranda Cook. That right there is the Blitz 8 preview show. Thanks for joining us. Blitz 8 goes live at 11 o'clock tomorrow night for all the highlights of storylines. Please check it out from tomorrow night to the Friday before Thanksgiving. Have a great football season.